I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. In August of the year 2022, um, starting on the, uh, the 15th of August, which was a Monday morning at 8 o'clock, um, I took 30 some people, I think maybe 40 or 50 people now because we had a couple of cars go down as well, down to uh, 240 Greenwich Street, which is where the Mellon Bank is at, and started our week-long pro uh, protest of that bank. Uh, we got out, started singing songs and prayers at 8 o'clock as people were going into the bank. Uh, and we stayed there uh, in front of the bank's main entrance until... 12 noon, we took a break, had lunch at one of the local sandwich shops, you know, the McDonald-type joints, McDonald-type joints, and we'd come back at 1 o'clock and stayed until 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We did that every day uh, for five days, and you've seen the videos and pictures of it, and I'm going to show you some uh, even now, that what we did at the Mellon Bank and how we protested in the various days and the various robes I wore, and the, it went on for five solid days. On the first day, a police officer came, uh, who's head of the, if you will, community services, along with some other police officers, and asked what we were doing. We told him why we were there, and they gave me, he gave me his card, so if you need me, give me a call. They left. What I want to say to you about the arrogant Mellon Bank is that not one person, not one lowly officer, not one exalted officer, not one person, not one nurse. Now, we had school children out there in school uniform. And not one person in five days, eight hours a day, not one person from the bank thought it was worthwhile to come out there and ask me what be the matter and see if I could sit down with somebody. They could see the signs. They heard the speeches about our church. They heard the speech about our high school sending our students being accepted at Yale, being accepted at New York Law, being accepted at Cadoza, being accepted at Juilliard, being accepted at Fordham St. John. They heard all of that for five days. They heard that a church in Harlem is producing that. They heard that the church in Harlem has served over one million meals and have never taken a dime from the city of New York, from the state of New York, or the federal government to serve the meals. They heard all of that. They heard that. They heard that the church has a homeless shelter. They heard all of that. They heard all that. They saw the children. They heard that this is not about a mortgage where we borrowed money from the bank and didn't take, pay the money back. This is about a tax, water, and sewer bill for $36,000. They heard it, the Mellon Bank. They heard all of that. They heard all of that, and they did n not one person in five days. Talking about arrogance, talking about racism, talking about really genocidal hatred in the arrogant Mellon Bank. And when we get in the courtroom, I'm going to tell the jury and the judge how racist these people are. Hate feel. School children in front of your door for five days begging for mercy and not one, not a secretary comes out even to find out what my name is. Arrogance. Arrogance. Racism. Genocidal racism. I mean, you're talking about racial hatred. The Mellon Bank. School children at your door. You didn't have to agree that you're going to help her, but at least ask what be the matter? Arrogance. Arrogance like we were bugs under their feet. Ha! <laughs> But I got something for you. <laughs> we're not our school children. These children are not bugs under your feet. And you tell that girl, Tara Ward, up there with Phillips the Liar office, not Phillips Lytle, Phillips the Liar office, I'm going to send that girl back to law school. Not once. However, I came across an article the other day that says, Will the Mellon Bank collapse? Now, before I left, on Friday, the 19th, I believe it was, of August, I cursed the bank. I cursed the bank. I cursed the officers. 
I cursed the employees of the bank before I left. That was one of my final acts that I did, that the bank shall fail and the bank shall collapse. I cursed it. Now, in this stage of my presentation, I have many people that listen to me who really admire me, but they're afraid to tell me that they do. But you don't have to believe any of this. You don't have to believe that the curse worked. You don't have to believe that God gave me the power to speak. You don't have to believe God gave me the anointing. You don't have to believe any of that. But I want you to listen. I'm going to ask you to listen to me. I cursed that bank that it shall fail. I cursed that the employee shall fall sick with diseases that cannot be healed and cannot be cured. I cursed the Mellon Bank. I did. And so the other day I ran across an article that raised the question. This, so this article was written by a fellow by the name of Daniels, I believe. Do we have his name there? Do we have the article itself? Do we have the, uh, do we have the article, the, the wording it, itself of the article? That the, who wrote the article, and it outlined the number of, or it, it outlined the, if you can put it up, Miss Senior, they'll put it up on the, um, if you can, uh, full page, if you, if you will. The, um, it, it, it states here that, let me just read in the second paragraph. Uh, well, roll it back just a bit. Let's get, there you go. Uh, investors are war- wondering about Bank of New York Mellon's stability at the near collapse of another specialized uh, financial institution, the First Republic Bank. Fears that First Republic could collapse led Bank of New York Mellon and 10 other banking giants to organize a $30 billion bailout. First Republic will use the money to cover uninsured deposits. The hope is to present, prevent uh, further bank collapses. Mr. Engineer, if you could go to the next paragraph, if you would, just kind of skip this paragraph. Why, uh, how safe is Mellon Bank? Uh, let's see, I, do I want to read this? Let's see. Uh, let's go to the next uh, subject matter. Oh, all right, that's what we're looking for. Could Mellon Bank or the Bank of New York Mellon collapse? I cursed the bank in, um, in what was it, August the 19th, the year 2022. Let's read. Skeptics will wonder if the bank bailout could hurt Bank of New York Mellon. Notably, Bank of New York Mellon admits it is making a billion dollar uninsured deposit to help save First Republic Bank. The Bank of New York Mellon can easily afford the bail because it had four, now here's where where I'm gonna get your attention. It had $405 billion rounding off uh, in total assets. And it had 148, billion dollars in cash and short-term investments on the 31st of December, the year 2022. Now, however, banks, bears will not, will note that the Bank of New York Mellon cash and assets shrank in the year 2022. That's the year I cursed them. I've said that before. The year I cursed them, their assets shrank. For example, Bank of New York Mellon's total assets fell from $444 billion in the 31st of December, the year earlier, 2021. It fell from $444 billion to $405 billion in a year to date, 31 of December, the year 2022. Now, that's the year I cursed them. And I sent out a tweet the other day saying that Warren Buffett, who was the largest investment depositor in the Mellon Bank, withdrew withdrew $38 billion from the Mellon Bank in part starting in the year 2022 and ending up in the year 2021. I will get those figures a little bit closer uh, defined in just a moment. But hence, Bank of New York Mellon's total assets shrank. They lost $38 billion the year I cursed them. Now, let me, let me say this to, just in case Stacy is listening or Tara Ward is listening, that uh, some of the lawyers, let me say this to you, that uh, some of the stockholders are listening. You lost 
$38 billion the year I stood in front of your bank. You think that's a coincidence? $38 billion, because this preacher and his children stood in front of your bank for a whole week and you didn't give a damn. Didn't ask one question. Didn't offer any coffee or water or comfort or bathroom use. You just didn't give a damn. You lost $38 billion the year that you didn't give a damn. So it's important for us, Mr. I want to read a little bit more because I, I conclude here. Similarly, Bank of New York Mellon's cash, because 38 billion ain't all they lost. Similarly, Bank of New York, Bank of New York Mellon's cash and short-term investments fell from 171 billion, rounding off, on the 31st of December, the year 2021. That's the year before I cursed them. It fell from $171 billion to $148 billion on the year I cursed them. Hence, Bank of New York Mellon's cash and short-term investment shrank by $23 billion. So if you add the $23 billion and the $38 billion lost, now this is what they lost the year I cursed them. You're up to $61 billion is what they lost the year I cursed them. You say, well, Pastor Man, it ain't had nothing to do with you. i tell you what. I'll curse you. <laughs> yeah, I'll curse you. And then you'll know. Do you want to find out if I can curse? Send me your name, and I'll curse you if you don't. <laughs> no. Now, I'll also bless. No, I'll also bless. I got blessings in my mouth. I got the word of God in my mouth. I can bless you too, but I'll curse you if you don't believe it. Since you're so sure that Mellon Bank did not lose this $61 billion because I cursed them, send me your name, I'll curse you, and see how fast you'll start losing. No, but I can bless as well. But that ain't all, Mr. Indian. Bring us a little bit more. Uh, moreover, Bank of New York Mellon's total debts grew. <laughs> really? You mean they started owing more money? Yeah, the total debt from $66 billion on the 31st of December of the year 2021, that's the year before I cursed them, it grew by an additional $6 billion to $72 billion. So they owe more money now in the same year. So you got $61 billion lost, $6 billion in debt. You're now up to $67 billion since I cursed them. That is right. <laughs> Another reason why the Mellon Bank's collapse is the cash flow. For example, Bank of New York Mellon, this quarterly operating cash flow fell from $3.1 billion on the 31st of December, the year before I cursed them, to two point. In other words, it fell by a billion dollars. Their cash flow, so there goes another billion dollars out the window. There goes another star, da, da, da. <laughs> There goes another $1 billion out the door since the curse. Thus, the quarterly operating cash fell in 2022. However, the quarterly operating cash rose uh, to $4 billion uh, on 30 of June 2022. And so you can see similarity in the next, next paragraph. The quarterly financing cash flow fell $24 billion in the year 2021. But in the year 2022, the year I cursed them, it fell $26 billion. There goes another $2 billion that they're losing. So when you sum all this up, thank you, Mr. Engineer. When you sum all this up, you're looking at close to $100 billion since I cursed. And you say, well, Pastor Man, that, that, that ain't, it ain't, that just happened because of the market. Okay. 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 I bet you, I bet you Robin Vince, who is, probably on the short list of you lose his job as president, that there needs to be an investigation. First of all, Robin ben, Vance, he, and he just took over, by the way. That's the, he took over the year I was down there. And the year he was down there, the year Robin Vance, this boy, this boy you're looking at now, he lost a billion dollars. The, the president before him and had a good year. The year Robin Vance took over, I'm not, I, I'm not sure if he's still the president. They're going to fire that boy. But there needs to be an investigation into you, boy, Robin. There needs to be an investigation into you. 
Uh, when I was out in front of, and you can leave a picture of them, it's in there. Robin Vance, listen, boy, when I, and I, I, I mean to talk down to you because you look down from your ivory tower on us like we were bugs under your foot. I mean, I aim to talk down to you, boy. I aim to talk down to you. I want you to know it. That this boy up here from North Carolina, up here in Holler, is talking down to you, boy. I want you to know that, Vince. I want you to know that. But there need to be an investigation to you, boy. Mellon Bank and Lord have mercy, don't let me get in a courtroom before a jury of your peers. And I tell them how y'all didn't come out to offer us water, didn't come to offer the children a place to go to the bathroom, didn't come to ask one question in five days. The world needs to know how heartless, how arrogant, how racist you are. The world needs to know that. The world needs to know about you, boy. Hey, don't, hey, you better pray, you better pray that they fire you that before the heat comes. Because it's coming. Anybody, a community bank in New York City can let black people stand out in front of them for five days and not one damn person come out there to ask what be the matter because they black. You got some, you got some answer. You're going to have to answer, boy. You're going to have to answer in that courtroom. You're going to have to answer. Why did y'all let them children stay out there like that? Telling you not to close down their school, not to crush their school, not to close their school, not to close their breakfast program, not to close their homeless shelter. Why did you not have any concern about that boy? You let that lying lawyer, Jonathan Goldblatt, lie and say he had nothing to do with it. But ah, a bit, 100 bit, and that ain't all. That ain't all. You're going to lose. You're going to lose a whole lot more. A whole lot more. The worst for you and the Mellon Bank and all of its employees and staff and investors, the worst is yet to come. Here's what I've come to say. Drop that mug shot. I've come to say this, that Warren Buffett withdrew $38 billion from the bank when he heard that you would, what you were doing. And by the way, he didn't hear it from you, uh, uh, Robin Vince. He heard it from Smith and Walensky Steakhouse. But then you put Warren Buffett's picture up there. I went, in addition to the Mellon Bank, I did nine nights of protest in front of the world-class fancy steakhouse called Smith and Walensky. We were there for nine solid nights. And it was there where all the photos of Warren Buffett it was there that Smith and Walensky contacted Warren Buffett. It was there that Warren Buffett was told what the Mellon Bank was doing. It was then that Warren Buffett withdrew his $38 billion from the bank. I've got a note here. It says that um, the, War the Warren Buffett-led conglomerate sold its remaining six uh, million shares in Bank Corp but it sold 25 million shares in the Bank of New York Mellon. Uh, we can put that up a little bit later on. So when Warren Buffett heard about this, that's when he withdrew and, and the right thing to do, that he didn't want to be associated because when we were at Smith & Walensky, the managers came out nearly every night and asked why, why were we there, we were there or not, they, we shouldn't be doing that. At least the managers, they could have offered me one of them steak dinners. They could have said, come in, Pastor Manning, and, and sit down, and you and Elizabeth, and we're gonna have a steak dinner and talk this thing over, let the other people stay out there, but come on in, and we, we'll talk. They didn't do that, but they did come out in there. They did, at Smith and Walensky, they did show some humanity. You people at the middle of that Robin Vance is heartless. I mean, you're godless. Robin Vince, you are a terrorist. Mellon Bank, you are a terrorist. I mean, Hamas has more heart than you, Robin Vince. So, we are on now proclaiming our first great victory in this battle to take down the Mellon Bank. Now, Tara Ward, Tara Ward, little girl, go run and tell that. 
Go run and tell that to the judge. Run, Tara. Tell that. See, I thought it was going to get you. No. Mm -mm. I'm the Hamas terrorist. Well, we were in front of Smith and Walensky. The managers came. Now, they weren't happy to see us, but they came out. They didn't treat us like we were trash. They didn't treat us like we were black scum from up in Harlem. The way Robin Vince and all the people down there in the Mellon Bank treated us like we were black scum from Harlem. But at least the manager came out there looking with a little, uh, a little bit old guy. Came out there to talk to us, say, well, kid. No, mm -mm. no, we're, we're, we're just beginning this battle. And the Mellon Bank will come down. Yes, it will. And I'm not going to stop fighting. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. A terrorist organization called the Mellon Bank. That's right, in the New York NYCTL and James Meeks. Terrorists, terrorists, financial terrorists, terrorizing neighborhoods, terrorizing homes, terrorizing families, creating shelter population. Terrorists, James Meeks. Terrorists, Robin Vance. Terrorists, 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 who they are. They're terrorists, I tell you. The Mellon Bank is a terrorist organization, I tell you. And they're the terrorist lawyers, the Philip Lytle. They're terrorists, I tell you. Terrorist, I tell you. But I'm the Lord's servant. And I'm not through. We've only just begun to praise God. Give him the glory. And to return the people the property that's been stolen from them over the years. I'm James David Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant. And boom, shakalaka, 